Thank you, everybody. Um, Terry was not able to do the minutes this week, so um, we're going to pass. We're going to pass by the public comment because there is nobody, and the approval of the minutes section. So where we were five minutes behind, we are now five minutes ahead. How do you like that logic? Yes. The power of roadkill and bubble gum. Um, all right. So we're going to review the to-do list. Um, I leave that up to you guys to do. Let me get out my notes from last week, or I'm going to be. My only task was to contact Molly Froelicher and get on the Froelicher? Froelicher. Froelicher. To get on the forest something. Forest citizen. Citizen. Forest, yeah. Web citizen. Um, forest. Listserv. Mm -hmm. All right. Which I did. Good. Excellent. All right. Um, anyone else want to report anything about their to-do lists? You sent your letters out, right? Yes, I did, but I thought that was on here. I did. I sent the oh, landscaper letters out. Oh, great. They're all sent out. I sent okay. them to... Let's see. 25 companies. Was Omasta one of them? Omasta Landscapers? Can we add this to the list? Sure. Okay. Yep. Uh, I just saw them in front of um, People's Bank recently. Need to. Yep. And uh, uh, I have to load it up. Yeah. So, so what I did is I expanded the list, not to go too far in the section of the meeting, but I expanded the list basically to grab um, all the landscapers at Village Hill okay. plus all the local tree companies because it just was kind of landscape, landscape professional, but I expanded it because we need to have sure. tree, tree folks, or tree companies. Mm -hmm. um, and I sent the one to Bill's Landscape, which is in Enfield, Connecticut. Okay. Which is the one that Paige had to talk about. Uh, yep. Yeah, we can talk about what kind of follow-up sure. we might want to do. Yes. All right, anything else about reviewing the to-do lists? All right. Uh, let's see, chair report. The only thing I wanted to report is that I got an email from the Executive Director of Growth in Northampton, Clem Clay. Uh, let me look it up. And he had an inquiry because he is exploring the possibility of engaging in a relationship with Habitat for Humanity, which is building, I guess, another set of houses in Northampton. And it says, I'll just read you, it says, um, well, the bottom line was that they, they had mitigation requirements for taking down trees that they needed to take down for a project. I don't know if you're familiar with this project. I'm not sure what the location is. And the, I guess, per ordinance or planning policies regarding mitigation, they have to replace them with at least, at least two inch, um, caliber trees and the habitat was exploring um, having the trees planted on the grow food site um, as, a, as the as the landing place for their their um, mitigation uh, the thing is that tr tr uh, grow food Northampton wants very specific trees namely fruit trees because they're all about growing food and it's hard to procure two inch fruit trees so they wanted to know if there was any flexibility in that. And I said, oh, uh, um, I'll bring it before the commission. I'll talk to Rich and we'll, we'll look at it. And it sounds like the, the project might be in a little bit of hold. So I don't know that we need to have an answer. But I, I suggested to him that in theory, it seemed reasonable when tree stock is not available um, in the size that you want, that you could double the number of tree of one inch trees um, in lieu of, of planting two inch trees, if that was the right tree for the right spot, mm -hmm. um, but that I couldn't say for sure. So, Rich, if you want, I can forward you some of the details of that. Yeah, that would but be helpful because I think he's talking about the project in Glendale Road. He might be. Um, that was, uh, there's four, four building lots. So, Ken, Kenwood Estates, this, so on, across from where the gate two is at the, Glendale Road. Across yeah. the street, there's all this conservation land in there. Um, it was to be in development, but it was basically dropped in the late 80s for funding purposes, whatever, for funding reasons. So the city actually bought all the conservation land. Uh -huh. Then they sold off the building lots that were buildable 
um, to habitat, mm -hmm. so it would help pay for the uh, per purchase of part of the purchase of the land. So habitats in there actually working with uh, Smith School and donated services for doing tree removals and also with CL Frank. So they have to abide by a significant tree ordinance. Right. So they have to mitigate for the loss of the I see. Private trees that are over four Right, inches. right. So this is all per the, the ordinance. Yeah. Yeah, and he says the challenge is that two inch caliper seems to be an immutable requirement of the shade trees bylaws provision for replacement trees. And that is a very big tree for the species we might be looking at. I'm wondering if you have any insight into ways that a larger number of smaller trees might meet the intent of the bylaw. And and if it seems like something that could be done with integrity, whether there's a path forward to make that argument and seek an exception. There we go. Hey, all right. Aging. Hey. Well, the tree planter arrives. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to bring that forward. It's really part of chair report, not um, a broad discussion at this point because there's not a decision going to make, but I'm happy to forward you or anybody else um, information about this. Well, it's important to note that that ordinance does not fall within our jurisdiction. Does it fall within yours? Okay. Yeah, because I'm my job is all over that ordinance. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Somehow, somehow. All right. Well, then I should just forward it to you. Yeah, it would be interesting because I, I would have to I would have to have a conversation with Carolyn Mesh because mm -hmm. he is correct. The uh, uh, the subdivision rules and regs require basically two inch caliper mm -hmm. trees that are on the list that the planning board presently uses, which is not our list, which mm -hmm. is their list, which mm -hmm. I'm still working with Carolyn Mish to, to get it changed. Yeah. They're, they're putting in a street? They're putting in a common driveway, but they're requiring them to uh, mitigate for the loss of some of the larger trees that are there. And it's also applicable to the project down the road, which is going to be the dog park, which is going to be a lot of clear cutting of land. So they're, I have not seen that plan yet. That's not yeah. how many trees are coming out of there, but that might be a bigger, and I kind of think that it might be good in, in retrospect after looking at this to maybe go back and look at the significant tree ordinance and maybe possibly change it a little bit. Because one of the things I'm finding, one of the things, so I went to Connecticut uh, to the uh, Bushnell Park and I had a conference there about significant tree uh, care and maintenance to the city of Hartford. And um, one of the things they were talking about was mitigation for tree loss. And so the majority of people majority of developers they don't bother to plant they have they have a lot of these Hartford they have a rule it's 13 inches on any tree on public property anywhere it doesn't matter so they actually just turn around and they collect the money from the developer let the developer clear cut the land and then they put the money into a tree it's a little different than what we do here um, sure there is no dollar value you have to replace so your tenant you have to replace 10 inches of caliber somewhere or pay into the fund, but there's no designated actual cost. There's a number cost. So that I think might be to be looked at. Because mm -hmm. I use a number when I when we try to mitigate the loss of public shade trees, I tell folks that it's 90 bucks per caliber inch. And you know, it's basically what it costs for us to buy uh, you know, a two-inch tree is 180 to about 200 dollars for our cost. So that's what I use for a dollar figure. So when people don't want to mitigate for the loss of that tree in the public way, they want to pay for it, and they want to, it goes, I just charge them for whatever the DBH is. So instead of actually getting half the DBH, I'm getting, well, not all the DBH, but I'm getting more money out of it than half. Mm -hmm. If you can understand that, mm -hmm. I'm not explaining that correctly, but. If you so put yes. a dollar figure on it, it's going to change over time. It will change, it'll increase. But I think that's one of the things that significant tree ordinance does not have in it is a dollar figure. So yeah. I've had some discussions with Carolyn because it impacts this larger project, which is the dog park, because they have a lot of public, they have a lot of private uh, white pine. So it's a huge white pine forest there, and they're going to have to take a lot of them down. Why do they need to remove those trees? Uh, a dog park. That's a good question. I have. In the I mean, if they're building a building, it's one thing, but I haven't seen them. I haven't, I haven't seen them plan. Down for that? I think because they're going to open it up and have large fields. Hmm, they could have large fields with tree in them. Yeah. Right. I, have, I haven't, I haven't seen. Right. I, haven't I seen want to make plans. sure that we anyway. um, keep keep moving along. Um, we're only on the chair report, so um, that was my re my report from from Clem. I'll forward it to you. Thank you. Can I just make one other comment yes. about that? Mm -hmm. 
to you, I guess. Um, that, that, that two one-inch trees is not at all the same as a two-inch tree. Mm -hmm. It's a lot less. Just the volume, in terms of volume. And when you think about, like, here's two one-inch diameter trees, and there's a two-inch diameter, you can see, like, it only covers a portion of the whole two-inch. Yeah. So, like, if you're going to replace a two-inch tree, we were like, three or four. Okay. One inch trees, not just two. Yeah, I mean, one could make the argument though that a younger tree will do better over time and will catch up at a faster rate than a, than a, an older tree. So, but but thank you for that. Yes, I mean that's why it's kind of ridiculous about you know like taking down a thirty inch tree with. 30, 30 inches, I mean, it's like a, a tiny off. fraction. Right, exactly. Just um, so that gets but yes, I, I agree, and that's a good point. All right, so that's it for my chair report. On to you. Um, I think most of the things that I want to talk about are covered. I don't think, I don't really have really like anything specific to add other than I did stop a tree from being removed or a tree from actually the so part of this project, um, Habitat for Many project, there's a white oak that they actually had asked to have removed, oh, no. which uh, I so like white oaks. <laughs> and that tree is now that tree will stay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and they're going to protect it, like yes, know? it'll have to be protected. Again, this is an interesting project because working with Habitat, it's all volunteers. Yeah. So you had volunteers that tagged all the trees to be removed, so they had every flag that you can imagine, yeah. every color. Oh. I couldn't decipher what the heck was going on, so we went up there with Carol and I met with them, and so I was getting some. So they are following the rules of the mitigation mm -hmm. rules from the city of Jordan, and there's only one public shade tree that's going to be impacted, and it's a, it's a high-risk tree anyway, so it's going to be removed. Uh, and we'll, we'll remove it, but there's one tree that was going to be taken down because they wanted to build a uh, rain garden or bioswale because there's no there's no uh, storm drains on Glendale Road so they actually have now they're making this big long common driveway they have to have somewhere for the storm water to go yeah so that I said to them you just got to push it away from the tree if the tree stays I said if you want to mitigate for the loss of that then it's 30 inches absolutely we can talk about that but it's going to cost a lot of money and so I think they were mm. I know it's been a long time yeah Ever. it's been there for a while yeah, yeah. yeah. good can I ask you in your um, in your report? Can you report on? Um, remember, I called you to Lyman Road oh, yeah. for yep. utility trimming, yes. national grid trimming. So, Lily alerted. I knew National Grid was in town, and they're just about finished with their line clearance, which they're on a five-year rotating cycle. And typically, in the past, we've had pretty good luck with most of the folks that work for uh, National Grid. They're pretty good in their pruning practices. Uh, Lily alerted me to these fellows that were down in the line of the road. They were trimming these trees, and they were just really, um, they were making a mess, and they were actually taking off too much material. You know, and they were basically taking off material that was at, like, face level or height, you know, which normally would be taken off if the trees were pruned properly when they were young, but they weren't. But they were just cutting stuff off that was unnecessary, that it really had nothing to do with the utility. So I went They down. pretty much cut the entire one side of the tree. They did. And they also, not only did they do that, they also cut too low. So they're not in the business of trimming for the telephone or cable. That's not their job. And they also are not supposed to do any shelf cutting, which they did do too much shelf cutting, which is basically just, you know, shelf cutting is like this. Mm -hmm. Some of them were like that, but I brought, I called Lance Wade and actually went down and met with him two days later and walked around with him and basically told him I was very disappointed in their, this particular crew of people. So with that said, they're all done. And they actually are about two weeks late. But I think next year when Lance emails me, I think actually even before that, I'm gonna, I think it would be good to figure out, and I don't know, I don't know what their timetable is or how they pick their contractors. It's through contract, obviously, mm -hmm. probably a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I'm gonna try to have to meet with them before they go out and work in the field mm -hmm. and meet with their art, you know, National Grid's arborist and uh, the assistant arborist and their, uh, the crew foreman from whatever company they use to go over their work. Mm -hmm. So, and Lance was perturbed as well. 
who was disappointed because they were leaving still have stubs like this. I mean, they were just, they were, yeah, instead of going back to some branching, you know, if you have them cutting it here and then having this, the uh, stub here, they were, they were leaving stubs up here. So they were just hacking, they were, and they, they weren't very polite to me when I went over there, um, which is fine, I dealt with it. You know, like, who are you? I'm like, I'm the tree lord. What do you do? And I'm like, well, I think, I think it sounds the same, I asked this. Lance here? No, he's not. So I, 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 I had the same problem before at Sheldon Field with a different company. It was asked one that was working for National Grid did the same thing. They just hacked the living heck out of the linden trees there. Mm. Um, and I made them come back and trim them correctly to the best of their ability. Try to correct some of the damage. That's so frustrating, especially after that, work, that um, conference that was at UMass a couple years ago with the utility companies talking about how their changes practices have gotten better and they're doing all these great, mm -hmm. you know, doing it the right way and everything. Mm -hmm. The problem is yeah. they low bid everything. Right. And right. So and they can't get good people if yeah. you're not paying. That's right. Yeah. Well, That's it sounds great. like they also don't have really stringent requirements about how to do it. You know, they don't say, cut, you know, exactly here, do it this way, don't do it this way. Well, I mean, I think National That's Grid, na they have a template that they give them that says this is how it's supposed to be done and this is how low you're supposed to go and this is where you're supposed to cut back to. Um, but apparently this particular crew didn't follow these standards, so I think the best way to avoid that would be to get in front of it and actually meet with Lance and whoever else I need to at National Grid to make sure that next year when they do their set of line clearance work that I meet with the crews that are going to actually do the work and spend 15 minutes and go do a little pruning, talk about some pruning practices. You know, I mean, it's unfortunate because most of the trees they were pruning were, I think, like they were red maples or sugar maples, they're all totally planted in the wrong place, you know, and they're huge, not huge, but they're going to be huge, mm -hmm. and they're going to be, you know, like right. this, yeah. and they'll end up, you know, figuring out a way to go around the wires to survive, but they're not going to be, they're not going to be pretty, and they're not going to be healthy, yeah. so they actually become a liability. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks. I, I so Thank appreciate it. When I saw them trimming, I texted Rich on a small chance that he could do something about it. He was there within like seven minutes. Mm -hmm. So yay, Rich. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the tree siren's going. It's yeah. Impressive when he shows up. I'm still waiting for a badge. <laughs> really? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Really? No. You planted a seed in it. Yeah. Yeah. No bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, on to Arbor Day preparations. Well, we are a week away, a week and two days away from Arbor Day here, folks. Uh, Gazette planting, um, I can report that so far I have um, recruited three volunteers to help with the planting. And I, I have no doubt that I'll get another two, so I feel pretty good about that. I did want to ask, you know, we decided, Rich, I think, if I recall, that we decided we were going to do it actually on Arbor Day. Am I right about that? Because I know I could get a lot more people if I did it on that Saturday, but I think we decided we were going to do it on that Friday. Is that the plan? Did that, I get that right? That, well, we had originally talked about that, but I think it was based upon what you have got for volunteers. Yeah, and also your crew, because... The crew is going to be working both regardless. days. So regardless. Uh -huh. So okay. if, we, if we were to move it to Saturday, Saturday would work as well. They're going to be here anyways to set up and break down the tables for the whip giveaway. So they're going to be here on the clock, so it's not really any extra. I mean, I. It's I, just a matter of what kind of work we do during the week yeah. to get prepared. And you want to you want to do the Gazette planting all in one day, right? Yes. You don't want to drag that out. No. Okay. So well, we're, I, we're, I think at this point we're going to do the ones that are in the pile swell. I'm still waiting for. Yeah, that's that's that what I mean when I when I say that. All right, so, um, and, and there's a total of six, right? There's, because there's one on the other side of the driveway. Well, no, there's no, five no. in the bias There's five. There's five all together. Five there's all five. together? I thought there was five, and then there was one more over there, on the there other side. There were when it was, the six of that, but now that it's not in plain with the wider tree. They were very wide. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So we okay, so there's five. Yeah. All right, um, well, in that case, I almost feel like we have it, because if, if there's, if there's three volunteers, and then can I just be reminded of who else um, can be there? What time is it happening? Uh, I think we said 10 to noon on Friday. Uh, I thought I remember Jen. You yeah, said I'm pretty sure if it's earlier in the day on Friday. Yeah, so I it's Jen, Lily, are you going to be there? 
Um, I'm, I might be doing other trees, other places. Okay. We can get people to go in there. All right. Okay. Yeah. I, have I, mean, a, I have a cash program. Right okay. I could do it. I have to change another thing because I didn't know what time this was going to be. But okay. um, you can do it, Molly. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, so and that's that's. Um, Rich, are you going to? Did you say ten? Is that plan? Yeah. 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 So you've got like three three workers and three leaders. Do you feel like that's enough for five trees? Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a they're they're in bags. Yeah, it's a lot of workers. Oh, yeah. uh, they're, they're in bags. bags. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not B and B. Not B and B. So that whole thing we did at the library uh, won't be it. Won't be nearly as much. Okay. Um, All right. Well, then I I think we're good. We're good to go. So t we're going to say ten. Yep. And can you remind me what I should, um, uh, just sturdy shoes, gloves, anything else? No, we'll have, we'll have all the tools, we'll have the water, we'll have the park mulch. Great, and we have one person per volunteer who can actually teach them how to, to plant a tree. I, I, I do think pre in previous years, I haven't really encouraged people enough to wear gloves. Yeah. Yeah, I usually yeah. bring gloves, extra gloves, because nobody ever has gloves. Okay. Or that we are like I know. winter gloves. And I've, I've thought of it as okay, and now I'm yeah. thinking not gloves. thinking of it as yeah. okay. Okay. All are right. you thinking, so, I'm not going to be able to train somebody how to plant trees that aren't you know. Really? Well, well, we can plant it. We can plant. Metal. We, can, I, I, we, we can do work with me. Yeah, 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 we can plant one yeah, together, and yeah, then, you know, okay. it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah, right, and if you want, Jen, you can do a demo for everybody for sure. the first one, and then sure. and then we can break up. Sure. And okay. is it happening rain or shine? Well, torrential I mean, rain. Torrential rain, no, but I mean, if it's drizzling, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's that's the Gazette. April twenty seventh. April twenty seventh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Ryan Road, do we ever, is that, is that anything going to happen oh, with Ryan Road Elementary on okay, Arbor Day or around Arbor Day? And I don't have anything staked out there. Okay. So Did you ever? I have not had anything back from no, that. No, I And I didn't contact anyone at Ryan Road School. Okay, no. well then that's off the table. Okay, so that's being just off Wait, the table. Wait, can I just clarify? It's we're talking about the planting on Friday the 27th, right? Friday the 27th, 20th. 10 a.m. Okay. at yeah. Con on Con Street. Got it. Okay. Well, just this point, we're talking about Ryan Road. I, I don't know what progress is at uh, Jackson Street, but I know that the, uh, the, the uh, parent group there is planning this summer to plant a bunch of trees Great. With, Great. with us all. There. Great. But they're not the trees. They're in a different place. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. our, our focus is very narrow. Yes. <laughs> They are planning to do it. They seem totally. I, I, I suggested they get permission like way, way, way in advance. They said that they feel it's not a problem. Well, okay. I wonder if it would be helpful if we would, if I could have the contact person, yeah. their name. Could you send it to me, and yeah. then I will plant a little seed with them and see if it goes the other way. Yes. Oh, that's a good yeah, idea. We can try. I don't know. I don't. Gwen is usually pretty good, but I don't know. Maybe her the emails go to spam. I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He, he's so. a very nice guy, Chris. Okay. You know, he, mm -hmm. he works right. at Orchard Design, whatever Orchard Landscape. I just want to, can we just back up for one second and just, so Rob and I met last Wednesday with Michael Riffenberg at the Gazette to oh. go over the planting. Okay. Um, and we laid out the stakes for him to take a look at, which I have not heard back from him um, because we, we also, in the back, you know, in that back row, we ended up putting um, the, the sweet gums. So we are going to put the sweet gums. They're just going to be in a triangular. So you're going to have basically two lemon plane trees in the bow swell, and the sweet gums will be within the 20 foot right away. And he was amenable to that, but I, well, yeah. But, uh, Sue just reported that the tr those little uh, trees that were in the way are coming down right now. So that, yeah, yeah. that must mean he's moving forward. So Freshly I, he, cut trees when I just oh, drove by. Oh, the apple trees. Oh, yeah. okay. So I, I haven't seen I have not seen an email from him. Right. I did send him an email. Um, and, it, and just to encapsulate our meeting that we have, which mm -hmm. basically was we're going to plant the five London plane trees, mm -hmm. and then we're going to still, we'd like to plant the sweet gums uh, in the which, back. Which, which, are, which are probably going to be uh, just a sabbatic one. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. So that's black right. Comes. Yes, black gums. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's right. We changed it. So he yeah. seemed very amenable, and then we're actually going to. 
plant them at setback planting, so they will sign the documentation all for the registry of deeds. Wonderful, good work. Will she so, um, get to grind those stumps, or do they? Do There's so much space. I bet you could plant around them with no effort. Uh, I don't think. Good question. I don't know who's doing the work. Did you see this? I didn't. I was just okay. driving by and noticed. Oh, oh, I was looking at the stakes, and then I noticed there were trees down. The, the stump. The, the, Stumped they won't be like it's no. enormous space. No, it's just some of the branching was going to be in the way. Right, right, and I think they're cut down. So yeah. we're reading yeah. through the, the tea leaves, and we're assuming that he went right ahead and cut them down means that he's thinking okay. about the second row. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you, does anyone want to confirm with them? Well, I'm going to send him an email uh, now that they're down. I'm going to send him an email again and just get back to him. I'll see if he responds. At least some of them were down. Might have been still some standing, as my as I recall. So those second planting tree Northampton could do those too. The setback like the, yeah, that's not. Well, I think is our, that a problem? Our, so what, I get confused about this. Now. No, I think when we left there, Rob and I were under the assumption that we were going to definitely do the trees in the bios right. because they're on on they straddle private and public property. Mm -hmm. The setback trees, depending upon what they were going to do with those uh, trees that were, the existing trees that were there, and then whether or not he liked the stakeout that we did was going to be something we're going to do in the future, what would be done this year. So okay. now that they're down, I don't know if we can actually, I don't think we can get the black gums between now and then. Maybe we can, but right. that's, something, but that's something we can talk about. But Trina Hampton, we'd but like to have their help in getting them planted. I think Jen's general question might be, if the trees are paid for by the city and they're signing the, the document, then that's OK. Then it's the city. Project. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That, that's what I needed. The piece of paper. And, I, and I don't think. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. To him, that if were otherwise, if he wanted to buy the trees, that just didn't come up. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. then it would have to be trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the so cool. the back the back section of the, the part the private property beyond the twenty foot is going to be basically an empty. It's going to be like a field now. Yeah. So might be further discussion with them to see if they would be interested in having Tree Northampton plant trees that would actually, third row. Mm -hmm. yeah, so third yeah, row yeah, would yeah. be funded by, mm -hmm. maybe by the Gazette line. or donated by someone or whomever yeah. and then planted by Tree Northampton. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay, cool, wow, great. Cool. It's the reverse of a paid pair of dice for the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's good news. Um, all right, moving along. So Ryan Rhodes off the table with distribution. Sue, did you get any response from? You? Yeah, I had over response. Oh, oh, good. Okay. Like so only have to drop slough a pe few people off, but sometimes <laughs> wow. they cancel. So I yeah. yeah. All right. um, I have you know turned down a bunch of people, but I looked at got like 19 people wow. counting myself and Alicia. That's awesome. But what awesome. um, well, plenty of people. Great. Okay. Cool. Um, and then packets to landscape professionals. That's happened. Press release. Okay. It sounds like that's something that I need to go ahead and trigger now that I know that we all. Okay, so absolutely, especially before I sit down. Absolutely, the London plant confirm. trees. Confirm. London plant trees are going to be planted. But you know, it wouldn't harm. It wouldn't. It wouldn't do any harm if we say they, we also have plans to work with the Gazette to do a row of of black gums. Sure. So um, I'll, I'll wait to hear from you that you confirm that that is going to happen. So just going back to the packets, did it, it, it didn't go out or we just created it? Yeah, it went out. Went out. It went out. Yeah. But so meanwhile, um, I just got the spreadsheet from Rich, so I'll post that on Drive. And if there's further ones to add, can you Okay. Actually, before we, we go, uh, we leave that topic, I did want to just throw out a, maybe it's a crazy idea, and maybe nobody has time to do this, but I thought it would be worthwhile. If we have phone numbers attached to any of those, it would be worthwhile just calling and saying, hey, I just want to flag that we sent this um, mm -hmm. to you, and we hope that you will time, take time to read it, especially during this season of egregious volcano mulching. <laughs> I can make those calls. That's I awesome. Those together. Do, do, do other people like that idea? I great mean, idea. because people get no, stuff in the really mail all the time. Yeah, that's a great idea. If, if they didn't get it, can we resend, or is that too much work? No, we can resend okay. it because it, it's a mail merge document. So it okay. was Karen Nelson mm -hmm. helped that. It was easy to put. So it has the seal of the city on the envelope and everything? So. Yeah, oh yeah, it's official. I mean, the other way you can do it, too, to avoid the phone calls next year would be to send, uh, send a certified mail. Then you know they get it. Mm -hmm. But if we have a volunteer willing to call, yep. 
Um, all right, and you're going to put, Marilyn, you're going to put Omasta landscaping on there? What's that? Omasta. I just saw them o -M -A -S -T -A. on King Street. O-M-A-S-T-A. Landscaping, okay. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I need to go back to the, uh, to the whips. What is the rain plan? Is there, can we get up under City Hall or something? I don't think so. I think you have to be on the sidewalk. Hmm. So um, if it's raining, do you, have um, a, do you have a little umbrella kind of um, we could probably pop manage, up? We could probably manage to put a tent together. Are those little quick pop ups? I'll be emailing the volunteers and I'd like to include you know, a plan. If we we have tents that we can use. It would just have to be modified. The tents because it's a hard surface. Mm -hmm. Can't you could use a five gallon pail of sand in it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Put the tent legs. So in I'm going to tell them, rain or shine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I mean, we have we have, I think we should because we have five hundred and I can't. You have got yeah. rid of them. We have to get rid of them. And they need to get in the ground. For yes. Time. Yep. Um, okay. So um, back to the press release. Do we all? Got that covered? Any, anything else regarding what that you want to mention? Uh -huh. Nope, you're good. Uh, okay. Well, do you have this, do you know what the species are? Do you want to put that in? That would, that might Yeah, so get that's people related engaged. to the press release. So that's related to the press release. I want to make sure that I got everything in the press release that needs to be had. So I'm mentioning the whip distribution. And um, there's an email somewhere, Rich, that has the, the, um, the four species? Yep. Um, okay. Um, and the hours of distribution, uh, let me just review, it's Friday, what are the hours again? Friday the 27th, and we're going to be there at 8, is that when you would start giving them out, Rich? Yeah, we, we'll be there ready to, ready to move, yeah. Okay. And people 8 to 4. 8 to 4. When are you guys scheduled till 3.30? Okay. We work till 3. Can I have that? Oh, you work till 3? Okay. So, um... Should I say 8 to 3? Yeah, 8 to 3 on Friday, Friday the 27th. Saturday. On Saturday the 28th. 8 till noon. Okay. And it's City Hall. In front of the City Hall. Okay. So that, I'm mentioning the Daily Hampshire Gazette planting. Um, I'm mentioning the letters that we just sent to landscapers, and I'm mentioning that we have been selected to host the Tree City USA celebration this year. Uh, as, as just not not to invite the public or anything, but just as a point of honor that this that our town has been selected to host the Tree City USA awards ceremony. Is that? Do you think that's worthwhile putting I, in the I think, yeah, Sure. Is, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Can we get press there that day? Uh, well, that's I mean, that's usually the Molly's, hope of Molly, a well, Molly, Molly Crowder, she's the other one, although they typically, she takes a lot of photos, but I've not seen any press of her. Um, Give an award to the Gazette. <laughs> okay, so, that's on, <laughs> so that press release I'm going to send out on Monday. Slide Becker. On, mm -hmm. on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, um, if I get it to the, maybe I should give the head, the mayor a heads up. You should actually probably try to do a little before then. The mayor is in Greece right now. Oh. So it would be reviewed by Lynn Sennon. So if you could get it to me by Friday. Okay. She might be able to turn it, turn it around. I'll try. Or at least have it ready for him on Monday when he gets here. I'll try. Okay. I can definitely do it by Monday. Okay. Anything else? Okay, then the last thing under Arbor Day, sorry this one's going on a long, long, long time, it's, it's, a, it's a week before Arbor Day. The Mayor Proclamation City Council update. Okay, I'm not, obviously not going to be going in front of the City Council before Arbor Day to give an update. Sorry, I just, I'm transitioning into a new job, blah, 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 it just didn't happen. But I can make sure that the Mayor at the next City Council meeting, is it, will he be back? Yes. And is city council meeting next Thursday? Should be. That's the, uh, yes, I believe they are. I can just confirm that he's going to give the proclamation. Okay. All right, that's, I think we're covered for Arbor Day. Any other thoughts, questions, concerns? Great, thank you.
The next on our agenda is um, a suggestion from Rich. Um, so, Rich, I'll let you lead this topic on creating a subcommittee to help guide you on planting. Yeah, so after um, our last meeting where uh, Rob, Jen, and myself spent a considerable amount of time putting the design together in front of the Gazette, and then we came back with the design, and then the commissioners had questions, concerns, and uh, obviously some input and, and asked for some changes. I thought it might be helpful because now that we're kind of moving, we're trying to move in a direction of having more organized individual planting events, which it seems like we're going to be doing two a year. We're going to be doing one in Arbor Day, or somewhere around Arbor Day, Earth Day in the spring, and then possibly being able to planting in the fall. It would be beneficial to have a subcommittee of commissioners kind of work with me to make this uh, happen a little more f smoothly, I guess. Um, and one, the, you know, it's a couple of factors. One is the fact that you know, trying to get ahead of these, trying to get ahead of the order of tree stock. You know, we have to find the location we want to plant these in, and it doesn't always work that way. I mean. We can do some that way, but you're going to find the majority of trees we're still going to plant are going to be in, in I want to say oddball places, but they're going to be in different places. They're not going to be in this particular planting area. But when we go through these planting projects and we want to actually put a design together, it's not my place of expertise. But there's other things that weigh into that too, is that you know I rely heavily upon Rob to actually do a, a ton of legwork and actually finding the, the, uh, the tree species that will fit the particular site, um, and actually going out and tagging them and looking at the trees and figuring out if, a, if they're healthy. You know, you know, I have to give Rob a lot of credit because he basically went to Amherst Nursery with some help from Gene Northampton and actually tagged all the 168 trees that we're going to be taking on this year. So, um, and then working with Jen was helpful because Jen's got design experience, which I don't have. So it would be nice to have. If, if the commission decides to select this particular neighborhood, this is just an example, this is the neighborhood project we're going to do, these are the locations that are there, you know, what tree species are available and what kind of design do you want to put together that may include setback plantings or not. It would be nice to hand that off to the subcommittee and say, this is our location we voted upon, please put a design together with the, select, with the um, species that you have in mind and, and bring it back to us and then we'll take a look at it and I think that would be helpful. That would be helpful to me because I felt a little disjointed this last time doing this project. So I think we we have a lot of good things that we're trying to do, and we're, it's like we're we're really uh, for better words chewing on the fat in a sense, and we're just we just keep moving forward, which is great. But I think in order to effectively do this a little more organized, I think it'd be good to have a couple of commissioners work with me to make this happen mm -hmm. because I still have to order the trees, I have to write the contract for the trees. Um, if we do setback plantings, I have to physically go and meet and make, uh, meet the residents that want to do the setback plantings because I have to sign the documents with them. It's not like before where Trina Hampton actually makes the agreement, I have to do it. So it would be helpful to have, for me it would be helpful. Okay. What role are you thinking that a new person would serve some of those jobs that you just mentioned or I, something else? I think it would be more so in a sense that when so the commission would give us our marching orders as to this is the, this is what we decided to plant. You know, this is our two planting projects. This is for Arbor Day this coming, you know, this could be in January. This is for Arbor Day, and this is the planting project that we just selected because we, we just reviewed all the applications and we have selected this neighborhood based on the criteria of our neighborhood tree planting program. We want you to design the tree plantings for these two projects. And you just hand it off. And then when the design is complete or the legwork is complete, which includes picking out the trees, finding the tree stock, traveling to Amherst Nursery, or maybe even have to go out of state to get some of the stuff if we have to, doing some of the design work and working with me to make all this happen, we come back to the commission with a plan. Pretty, I mean, I think it's... Yeah. Okay, any other thoughts, comments? Todd, did I see your hand gesture? No, I do have to leave. Oh, you have to leave? Yeah. I, I actually, do you have to leave this second? Because I actually no. would like... Being that you have that, that most bird's eye view, um, I think more than all of us on, on you know, that what the city should be moving toward in terms of design, I, I, I envision someone like you on that sort of subcommittee. 
where you're helping to remind folks who might be a little bit more zoomed in that there is a bigger picture to consider. And just the way Rob brings the diversity piece to it, like we need to think about species diversity, I feel like you bring the, we need to think about, does this really fit into our vision of the, the best, walk, most walkable streets, the most aesthetic, you know, goals that we're trying to reach. So, I, you know, I, I think of someone as, as, as um, Todd as being very valuable on a subcommittee like this. I support, I support the idea of the subcommittee. I think it makes a lot of sense. I don't, I mean, it's kind of sucky to blindside and a group who's put work into something and then the last minute kind of yanked the, the rug under you and say, we really would have liked that. We want to avoid that kind of thing. Well, that's kind of, and after meeting, after thinking about this and then actually deciding to meet with Mr. Riffenberg personally and Rob, Rob went with me, I, I felt as if it was like a little egg on my face in a sense because yeah, we had sure. already, sent yeah. him a design that we put together and now we're telling him we're going to change it yeah um but he seemed to be fine yeah um, i think he, it was just he, he, he was on to the fact that it was a change that he wasn't entirely pleased with but he, but he, he was accepted right position. and yeah. he, did, and he right. didn't understand it so trying to email him back and forth didn't really work uh, so a personal meeting was a lot better yeah yeah, yeah. so but i'd so like to try to avoid time. that mm -hmm. i'd like yeah. to try to avoid that because a lot of Yes. There's a lot of work that you don't necessarily see, but I'm, I'm sure you can all yeah. imagine that goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. when Rob is trying to find tree stock to fit mm -hmm. these projects. And I would like to try to basically yeah. I want to formalize that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So we actually have a, a, a subcommittee that actually works to get it done and then presents the commission with the work. And, you know, and I mean, I think in, in a sense, I would hope that the commission would also give myself and the two commissioners or whoever may be, the three commissioners, the autonomy to say, you know, mm -hmm. Based on what we have available to us, this is the tree stock that we're going to use, and basically we don't, you know, we were fortunate over here that we had yeah. the London plane trees available right. to us. So, so you'd like to be able to make a recommendation to, as a subcommittee, to the whole group, and have that just be accepted? Not, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously, obviously you're going to have debate, but I mean, I think that it would just formalize that so it's not... I guess I don't want the commissioners to feel like we're just picking stock because we're picking that's all we have. Right. We've actually done the research, right. done the homework, okay. and this is what we think is going to work in this location for the project. So Before you, wait a minute. I know you have to go. So did you, do you have anything to say or anything you want to Can you have three commissioners on a subcommittee without posting public meetings? I think with a, I, I think with, it's not a quorum, no. so I think you can. Okay. Just going back to what you were um, saying about the picking of stock and it, and it, I think that if there's just in order to keep moving forward because we're trying to plant so many trees that when a plan comes it's not that it's above like the discussion but to actually take it down instead of just saying look this it, it's good to study the problem and so the next time we you know I think in general this commission it's best, it's best if, instead of trying to turn things around once they're already in motion try and ke catch it on the next mm -hmm. round. In other words, it, so if you see something, you say, you know, really we want, and that would have been better in this case, from my point of view, in other words, to say, look, maybe that's not the right approach, right. so that we, the committee, Rich can go absorb and say, okay, going forward, because the problem is that if we keep stepping back, it just, uh, we're just not gonna get we're just not going to get where we're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. let me let me encapsulate. Trying so for an example, if we had if we had this subcommittee prior to putting these planning plans together, then we would have avoided what we had. Mm -hmm. I had to go through with these edits. I mean, yeah. it's basically yeah. simple as that. And I think it would be more uh -huh. beneficial. But, but even then, if we came forward with plan like with including top and came forward and, and the group had criticism of it, I would say that it'd be better to just have the us, Rich, me, Todd, whatever, you can absorb that criticism, understand it for the next project instead of. I think that's a case by case basis, personally. I hear, I hear what you're saying, but I would say that in real gem situations where, you know, it's very rare to get a, a strip as open and as um, juicy as the Gazette one, that I kind of felt like I was willing to go to an uncomfortable place for that particular project. Yeah, see, I have exactly the opposite feeling. It was a place that trees that we can't normally plant could go. Yep. Yep. And instead, so what we're doing is we're planting trees that we can plant everywhere instead of trees that were neatly 
almost all the gateways basically are going to end up being either honey locust or lemon pine trees. I mean, I, I don't like mm -hmm. it. And so here comes what? Or ginkgo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So here was a place where we could have it. So in other words, you have an, you have something you feel special about. Yeah. But I'm saying there's something that very passionately as a group I feel special about, and I think other people here in yeah. the room too. And so to have it like everybody on the steering wheel after we put all that work into it and have it reversed, it's just not gonna, you know, if that is the pattern, if that becomes a, a, a way of pattern, that, there's just, that's just not gonna work. That's not, not, not a workable way of doing it because everybody in the room has a different view and if we're trying to move forward and get things done, it's like, it would be better to go, okay, maybe we're gonna accept that we're gonna have nothing but ginkgos, plane trees and, you know, that's a good discussion to have because then we can actually change it. And I would then go and when we had this first meeting, we would have gone and said, okay, yeah, we're just going to keep, because it's easy to put one of the right. entries down. But we were trying to pick, create a very particular kind of space with these two kinds of trees near each other that were going to be interesting in relation to each other. Um, they would have tons of color. I mean, there was, there was a whole bunch of stuff. Yes, you know? and, I, and I read the email that you passed on with all your comments. I read that to the whole group. So they were included in the discussion. And some of those trees were 70 feet tall, so it's not like we were planting little trees. Yeah. So, so I, I don't want to, I, I, like you said, we don't want to go too far back in time. Like, let's move forward. Right. And Rich is, has but, offered a, just, a model. I'm just saying, so in the future, when the subcommittee brings it forward, it's just better if instead of like us going back and redoing mm -hmm. it, it's better if we just keep going well, forward and absorb exactly. knowledge. So that's, I just want that noted. Yeah. Okay. I, it's noted. Work. It's noted. I don't know that I, I have to agree with you, but yeah. but it's totally noted. I want it noted. <laughs> but, but, but simply because if it goes back and forth like that, at some point someone like me will lose interest. Okay. I, I so let me qualify my. Yeah. I don't know that I completely agree, and that is that I agree with the concept, with with the ability in rare except in rare cases to make an objection. I just think that that is reasonable, that any group should, in rare um, cases, be willing to say, hey, you know, mm -hmm. I feel differently about this, especially when you're talking about three people as opposed to a committee of seven. So, um, you know, I, I just don't feel like any kind of stock blanket statement, which is that this subcommittee, which is not a quorum, is empowered to have make all the decisions regarding the trees is, is an appropriate one. Well, to actually, make. Rich makes the decision. In reality, in reality, well, he's the one. In reality, he is. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is putting pressure on Rich to, to change. Right, which I which I want to try to avoid, and this is the whole reason I wanted to have the subcommittee because I want to basically have these commissioners work for me to try to resolve these issues before they Absolutely. get before they get to the table. So when we get to the table, the whole commission looks at it and it's yay or nay. You know, because in a sense, that's really what, what we need. And if we're going to plan on planting 250 yep. trees a year or more, if we ever get to that point, we just it just makes it a little harder when you have to bumble backwards. But I mean, we're still learning, and we're still trying to figure out the best process to go about getting all this done. And I mean, the people sitting at this table, plus Tree Northampton, plus the tree crew that I have, have really moved a lot in the last three years, and so we have to keep moving forward. So I just think this is a good way to try to do that. Mm -hmm. And just try to, uh, yeah. That's why I okay. Say. Any other thoughts or comments from anybody else? I like the proposal. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it'll be helpful because the more that we will, the more that we do this, the better we're going to get at it. Well, it will also probably save like um, you know multiple people going out and looking at a site. Right. Where there's like a small group of you know. Like, cause you had, you know, you made the contact with, you know, or the Gazette, the Gazette, yeah. and then, you know, yeah. and so then, just then, from then, an efficiency yeah. point of mm -hmm. view and valuing your time and your time and, you know, everybody's time. And it feels being, like a yeah. both and, so the subcommittee mm -hmm. does the groundwork and then the commission gets to weigh in. Wait. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then we're going to be, we're always, the, only, the limiting factor in all this though is going to be the species that are available. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's really, and that's really, I think, what, what Rob is driving at is that, you know, we have a select set of species that we can plant that we can get readily that's available. But eventually over time what's going to happen is that we're going to do the same thing 
if we're not careful, that we are going to have too many London plane trees. We may have too many ginkgos, which you know may not happen in our lifetime. But you know we're going to leave a legacy for someone else. So I think it's just important to to try to to, to try to try something a little different and see if this works. <coughs> okay. All right. So is this something we feel like someone want to make a motion about to establish a subcommittee on this? And then we can talk about who we <coughs> are evaluated by. I make a motion that we vote on uh, Rich's recommendation to go ahead with this. I second the motion. Discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, there we go. Um, do we want to make a decision today about who's going to be on that committee? Or do we have volunteers? Well, it can only be three, right? He left, so. Yeah, well, I actually asked him on his way out whether he'd be willing to be on the committee because I, I, I feel like Todd is a, um, provides a, a, a perspective about planting that I personally would like to see on the subcommittee, which is just that urban planner. <coughs> Especially about tree calming, tree calming, <laughs> traffic calming, and, and stormwater mitigation over streets, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. That I think would be very helpful. It seems but, like a balance of people with different skills mm -hmm. on, a, yeah. on a group. Jen, what well, did you talk? Does that work for you? Sure. Um, Todd, I, I don't know, just so we can figure out how we would work. Maybe by email or something. How yeah. Are we yeah. So we can we, figure that. So what we can do is we can just communicate by email that the, the four of us are on the subcommittee, and then um, I guess our next project to talk about really would be Orchard Street. Right. Would be the next project that we actually would sit down and, mm -hmm. and right. collectively look at and get you know multiple planting sites. And right. 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 And if a subset has to get, you know, if we can't find a common time, we can, a subset can meet yeah. and we can well, I was just thinking about wrap the other place. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we can wrap them in. Know, we can just, you know, we got PDFs or whatever. Yeah. It would be good. To, I think it would be good, you know, to, to run things by him because he does have that zoomed out mm -hmm. view of how things do look. Mm -hmm. And I think that he's, you know, and we'll just see how it goes. And if it becomes too cumbersome, then we'll come back Figure and figure something, something, something else out. Figure okay. something else out. But All right. Good. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's going to make my life a lot easier. Yeah. Good. That's important. <laughs> um, all right. So moving on to our uh, planting plan, just want to touch in on all of these things we're doing, make sure that we're not forgetting anything. Um, the priority streets, we've now, we've identified them. You guys have put the order in. Um, you're, you're matching available species with sites. Is there anything that you want to chime in about that? Uh, the, the priority streets are all streets that pretty much, and I'll be going over this, this with Rich, pretty much require DPW or police detail or something or a fine time. So I do see that if we really try and stick to the, that as a priority, we'll probably find you know, maybe half as many trees this year as we did last year. Which, you know, it's okay, but it's, I think it's a bad plan, but it is the plan, so that's it. Is the main priority street is Bridge Street? Well, yeah, those, street, those streets, places like Bridge Street, Pleasant Street, and, and I, I'm having a discussion with Bridge about it, but it probably Tree North Hampton can't go out there without a, like a detail of either of yellow or blue lights. So, it just means the opportunities to actually plant are greatly limited. Um, you mean the whole time, Rob? The whole time that they're planting, they're going to need detail? Well, Possibly. For, for example, on King Street, you know, this is something Rob and I have to talk about. They yeah. want to plant this on, on Sunday on King Street in front of, I think it's Midas by Hooker Avenue. Yeah. There's a whole planting there. And the problem with that is that you have someone actually bent over and knelt, they're kneeling yeah. down in the tree belt. Okay. Yeah. And cars are zipping by them to catch the light at 40 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just a lot of traffic that comes there. People are trying to change lanes because they're in the wrong lane. They want to take a right on. This is King Street? Yes. King Street's not, not on our list of priority. 
It's not, but there's some locations there that we have trees that we want to plant that we have trees that left in our nursery. Oh, well, that's a totally different topic then. Well, no, in no. essence, it's really not because what happens is that these places, I wouldn't send my own crew there uh -huh. without a detail. Okay. And so what I'm, what I'm concerned about is that if someone from T Northampton, even though they've signed a waiver, yeah. they end up right. actually sure. stepping but out into yeah. the street. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. But, but, but the streets that we've identified as priority this year are Bridge Street. Yep. Pleasant Street and Elm Street. There were so the, 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 the commonality yeah. of them is that there are places where a lot of cars are going very fast okay. near near the roadway, and so uh, there's there's an issue of whether tree or tree folks are really going to go out there and plant without being in conjunction with either police detail or mm -hmm. riches mm -hmm. people. Okay, and that just slows. It, it, it's okay. not a, a fault. I mean, if they're, if they're busy. Uh, cutting down trees and doing other, other stuff. I mean, yeah. it, the whole coordination yeah. becomes much more complex okay. because it has to be in coordination with the right. DPW. You can't just go out there on a Thursday and plant with Exactly. And we can, you know, a lot of our planting on weekends. And so, you know, the, yeah. I had thought yeah. that maybe we could go out on King Street. I partly picked it because the tree belt's kind of wide mm -hmm. and we have people there who are yeah, mature and grown up. So and there's space on the other side that they can put people. You never know, though. I, whatever, whatever. I, I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm just saying that I, I'm trying to get some planting done, but it, yeah. probably this weekend the trees won't get planted. So every weekend that you don't plant trees, then, you know, it just won't get done. This year. So, so outside of the, pri so, so the priority streets need to be coordinated with DPW. Yeah. Right. Well, so up here, I mean, I have, Rich and I haven't fully had yeah. a discussion yet. Yeah, but let's just say ballpark that needs to Ballpark, yes. Do you have, like, other, like, backlog of planting areas besides the priority streets that you, as in in your role at Tree Northampton, have, like, in the wings right. that can just yes. happen? Yes, yes. Well, it's all very, putting this whole thing together, it's not, it's not so easy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah so I get because, that. Because <laughs> The priority street, it's going to be a lot, it just, that's what's available for priority streets now, or a lot of lemon plane trees. Yeah. Those are ready to go, but but we haven't worked out a coordination system. Right. For the plant right. The streets that are, don't need yellow or blue lights, those trees aren't ready until the fall. Oh, so got the picture. I'm, I'm just talking okay. overall. I mean, yeah, yeah. we've got like 50 um, linden trees, they're not, Going to be on the other streets that are priority streets. Are those backed or are they, are they all of them? They're both. They're both. They're both. The, the London plane trees are all in bags. Yep. But they're, I think, every one of them. But they're for priority streets, which were kind of stalled stall in. So that's the first right. hundred trees. So okay. I'm not talking about every single tree. No. Right. That's the first hundred. So the first right. hundred trees aren't really happening right now. Oh. There are some other trees that I'll be. Be out Monday planting there from the last year, mm -hmm. not trees from last year. Some some of them are actually last year's trees, but also just the things that we've st already staked and arranged. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Talked to Rich about. So there's a, probably about 20 or 30 of those. So mm -hmm. that's 130 trees, but it's still we're off we're off balance with because them. of the because of the limitations with the priority street. Do you yeah, we, just didn't, we just don't have, in other words, getting this to work so you get the right trees at yeah, the right yeah. time with the right crews. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, right. it's, it's a lot of all yeah. the trouble. And so I just want to say that the fewer, like this whole, you know, of like, well, so many in this district, so many in that district, and, and, mm. and you know, you start, you start laying on another layer on top of it, of, of like, this is what we want. It just means the pattern. Uh, and so some things are going to happen, like Lily pointed out that on Florence Road, at, Flo at no, at, on Florence Road, there's a housing development. On the Florence Heights. Florence Heights. Florence Heights. Florence Heights yeah. yeah. There. Oh yeah. I think we can go without. Yeah, I, I would be fine with that. I'm not happy. I'm yeah. Yeah. Street. Makes yeah, me I'm nervous. with you. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not sure any of these places well, I want to work on. Street wasn't on a priority street this year, so. No, um, I know, but that was a plan that we had. Up and that's another thing. Once we have a plan and we're working on something, to I'm like, oh, no, no. You know, well, you know. I mean, the right hand has to let, yeah. talk to the left yeah. hand. Yeah. We didn't know about that. Yeah. So right, we right. So respond to something we didn't know about. So we might be able to go to Florence Heights. I, I don't know, Rich. I mean, it, cars go by there. I don't know. It's just a little different. King Street's a little different yeah. animal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Florence Heights might, might be okay. We might be able to plant those there. We stake. I think I stake them. I would like, mm -hmm. put the request into Rich. 
I'm just saying that when you have all these issues, that then when you add another layer, yes. okay, it just makes it so it's not, it just won't happen. I, now, well. Now, now, now the, the, the other issue is that when I, when I go back and I think of it, and I see how few sites there are for large trees on the gateways that we're talking about, on the gateways period. There really aren't that many large tree sites. And I look at it and I go, okay, if we do this in the next year or two, all those sites are going to be filled in by, essentially, I guess, London plant trees, ginkgo trees, and... Honey locusts. And what? Honey locusts. And honey locusts, I mean, really. Um, and I think, well, wait a minute, you know, we're still waiting for Jay and his friend to come across with the elm trees that are going to be our salvation. And, and we will fill in. <laughs> so it's a little bit like, I feel a little bit like the people that went out and did the the uh, Norway maples and said, look, we got a great tree, we can put it in here, it'll be great. And then like, you know, it's like, wait a minute, you know, we filled up all these spaces with what we had at hand that we thought was a good idea, where if we waited, in other words, I'm not anxious to fill in any one category or fill in all the gateways until we sort of developed our best shot, which with South Street, putting those trees in, we get to see how those trees develop on that street. That's underwire, the underwire. The large trees, I'd like to leave a lot of holes for, potentially for elm trees. I don't know, Jay, if you think it'll come true. Maybe never. It might be waiting for nothing. But, yeah, but, but Jay. Yeah, I mean, if we had crystal balls, we would get it all right. But we don't, and we also have a sympathetic mayor and city council now and money flowing and we have um, you know a, a vibrant group of volunteers so I don't think we'll ever have the perfect conditions I completely hear I hear what you're saying about you wanting to save some spots that's why it, you know I, I feel so strongly that we need to pull out some of those trees on South Street South Street is one of our best tree belts in the whole city and we we filled it with some trees that I deeply regret that we put there so I, um, I'm sympathetic to that perspective. I also know that political winds can shift, you know, beyond just the realm of the city, and then suddenly we don't have... We but in order to get the numbers of trees, which has partly got to do with the will of the city, because it's got to do with how many trees we can plant, putting this overlay on it is going to put the brakes on it, and we won't get the numbers of trees. And I think it is num I think numbers in that I think if you look at the program, we've had a great program in 2017. We've had a great program in 2016. I, I, it, I, I know I'm deeply involved in it, so I'm complimenting myself. But I think <laughs> if you actually examined the program and you went and looked at what we accomplished, and you would go, wow, this is one of the best programs in Western Mass and maybe in Massachusetts. And so you look at it that way, and it's like, why mess with something that's so successful? Well, and with all due respect, this conversation feels like it's coming a little late, Rob. We, we talked about a planning plan over the course of many meetings, and, and, and I would have welcomed this input. And now when I'm actually meetings, faced with trying to make this thing You're work. finding that it's challenging. It's not, well, it's challenging, we, it's not gonna happen. Can we create Well, I, I don't wanna go that far. Because well, I'm going that far. <laughs> I, I'm telling you that, the, that if you put that overlay on it, you are not going to get anywhere near 250 trees this year. Okay. So, so Can then, we so then, so some kind then. of like decision tree? Is that, would that be helpful? Like we're three years as a commission now with great success and you're raising some uh, legitimate concerns. And going forward with, with this five pointed tree planting plan, maybe just create some kind of decision tree for, for each of them. Each of them. Um, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, we have priority these five areas down. that yes. the uh -huh. um, worked on. Yep, yep. Priority streets, downtown locations. Yeah. Right. Right, right, right. All that. So yep. I'm just wondering, maybe at this point, because we're growing and quite successfully, but it's now we've got to figure out more of the mechanics. Just for each of those, create a, a decision tree. What do you mean specifically? Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't can you give an example of what you mean? How All right, so used? priority streets. Step one in, in going forward in identifying what are the priority streets, what trees have to be planted there, how many, you know, like a decision tree, like you ask questions, yes or no, or it, it just, it's a framework for how to move forward and make decisions. Hmm. And I'm just thinking, I don't know, it's just a suggestion. Well, I mean, the first thing would be instead of having, you could say priority streets that can't be, that can be planted without DPW or, or, or police. 
Yeah, like does it need detail? Yes, no. Yeah. If it does, you do this. Yeah. If it doesn't, so do this. So I, I think those kind of I think those kind of details, to be truthful with you. So this is how I look at it. I hear Rob's argument about the fact that there are some large planting locations that would be nice to actually plant some uh, hybrid American elms if possible. But we, a, we don't know if we're ever going to really get them. Right. Um, B, I can tell you we're never going to stop cutting trees down. Yeah, there'll so be more spots. The, on Elm Street, there will be more spots yeah. because there are going to be mm -hmm. some trees that are going to have to come yeah. down. But I think Rob brings up a valid point because of we have that we have our planting priorities in our locations. So Elm Street is fine for planting with volunteers because the tree belt is huge. Mm -hmm. King Street, that was an that's a project that was that we've kind of had on the back burner. That's a different story. Pleasant Street, Pleasant Street requires uh, assistance because you got to have meter bags and you got to block off spaces in order to get the trees there for us to do the work, even to deliver the stuff. Never mind plant it, and then we have to go back and pick up the debris. So if there's a car parked in the way, I can't go back and pick up the debris with a buckle, or I got to wait till the car's moved, mm -hmm. or I got to drag from here to the wall over there and, and put it in, in the loader. So there's all these different pieces and parts that actually make this work. So, and I, I think to be successful, and I think you really need to keep continuing planting 250 trees a year. So if that means that we have to come back and look at our planting priorities every year, which I hopefully we're going to, obviously, we're not going to fill up every gateway. We're not going to fill the gateways up every, you know, in two years' time. It's just not going to happen. I, I don't see that happening. Well, we could if we, if we did 150 trees a year. That, that's which is the ambition. Right. We we could, but the okay. question is, can DPW support the planting mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. given all the other things that we have to do to do that? So, do we actually maybe increase? Do the different projects that we suggested we were going to do, identifying gateway streets that we want to plant, and like Con Street, for example. That's not that's not really on our list of priority streets, but it is a project, and it is kind of a gateway. It was an Arbor Day project. It was an Arbor Day project, but it, it is kind of it is a gateway. And project. it was it was like a secondary priority. So you know, do we end up actually to try to fill in the holes everywhere to get to that 250 number? Do we go back into the neighborhoods? Um, and actually look around for, for pieces in different in the different wards to try to get a number of trees planted to make up the difference. You know, philosophically speaking, are we going to wait to find the right species for Elm Street, or are we going to plant Elm Street and be done with it and just move on? I, I wasn't suggesting we wait. I just suggest no. But I think I think it's that, that I I think that philosophically we have to decide what we want to do. And I and I hear what Lily's saying too, though, because we have. You know, we have a, a money source at the moment, and we have a lot right. of support. And in three years' time, four years' time, that may end up changing. And, so, and also, it's not just about filling our city's canopy; it's about strategically filling our city's canopy. What, it's what, about filling it where it's going to provide right. the most stormwater mitigation, the best pedestrian, you know, um, quality of life improvement. Uh, you know, it's it. it uh, that's the that's that was the whole point of the plan is to bring a strategic totally, approach totally, to totally, it. Totally, to, totally um, and sense. I and I realize that plans are, are are just on paper until they've attempted to be executed, and that's where the rub comes in sometimes. And so I appreciate that real on the ground feedback, and 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 I you know I so I don't I don't dismiss it. I also um, I also push back a little bit against it's not going to happen because I feel like there's a whole spectrum of it's going to happen perfectly and it's not going to happen and there's somewhere in between where I feel like we can we can be and for example uh, priority plantings in um, on on challenging streets well if you bring in your your best volunteers who are you know the most sort of street savvy and have the most experience planting if you focus them on those streets that you find most challenging, and you leave the real novices to do more of the setbacks, the neighborhoods. I feel like there we can we can work something out, and and I'm not saying it's easy, and I I'm not the one doing the organizing, although I'm happy to support it. But um, I I feel like before we completely dismiss what um, we've worked I, here. I, I'm not, I want to make clear. I'm not dismissing this. I'm just I think it's a good healthy discussion to have because now so. We have the plan, but now we're actually diving into the plan. Yeah. And so we're, we're recognizing the fact There's that we have some limitations. 
we don't have the right nursery stock at the moment. Won't be ready till the fall. Um, you know, the planting locations that we we'll want to plant a either are not safe enough to have volunteers do the work. Mm -hmm. So if we want to plant the volume of trees that we did last year, do we have do we move? Do we shift planting priorities a little bit in, in midstream? Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to do that mm -hmm. because if we want to plant 250 trees, we may have to go back into the neighborhoods mm -hmm. in different in multiple wards to plant the tree stock that we actually have available to us, and then leave those other planting projects to when the tree stock is available, but still using this as a guiding factor. I'm not saying I don't support this at all. I think mm -hmm. this is great because this is helpful. Because in a sense, really, it's like, okay, Rich, we're going to plant trees this year. Well, why not? Hold on a second. Let me look. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. So what, what I find helpful is that at one point, which I supported, you particularly said don't plant the gateways, which was good because I had whatever, you know, it, it was a direction, so that's why we went off in the neighborhoods. Um, I said don't plant the gateways. Yes, you were very specific. Uh, yeah, you originally so said that to wait, not, I think to wait because we were unsure. Uh -huh. For example, like Pleasant Street. We, we recognize right. the fact that well, Pleasant Street well, is, the yeah. construction on Pleasant Street is yeah. done other than okay. it's going to be pavement. If I read it as generally, stay away from the game. No, no, I never meant that. I, maybe I was talking about Pleasant Street very specifically. Well, I, 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 I as a no. tree planter, took, took the instruction to be, it doesn't matter, I, I interpreted you as saying, don't plant the gateways. And for me, that was fine, because it was a direction that was general enough that, so, that it could be done. Let me clarify that. So We had gateways, main arteries, city parking lots, yeah. heavily walked or traffic, yeah. secondary streets. So but but, but what Rob, now, Rob, what you're talking about is, years ago. this is right, yeah. exactly. So in the very beginning, when we were trying to figure out where to plant, Yes. We originally talked about the decision to talk about planting on Main Street or not planting on Main Street. Planting on locations that we're unsure of what type of construction was going to happen or what kind of planning was going to come out of the, of the uh, planning department. We were unsure of that. We, so we, so, so we, we, we didn't plant any trees on Main Street, but then the following year we said, well, wait a minute, forget it. That, you know, If we wait, then Main Street's going to be devoid of trees. So then we said, okay, let's try to plant in these locations which we did and now here we are we have this plan in front of us i don't i don't want to go too i think we're going off the rails to be well, able to, well, hold on hold on let me yeah. just finish please i think we're going off the rails we have a plan here that the commission voted upon as a recommendation to the tree warden and the mayors to work where we have to, where they'd like to see trees planted we have to honor that to the best of our ability now we're not going to do all of these streets this year and we're not going to get every single tree we need for those locations we can try to do that to the best of our ability. And we will end up going back into the neighborhoods to plant the rest of the trees to get to the 250 and divide it up by war. It's gonna, let's just keep it simple. It'll all work out. Right, it's gonna work out. So what that requires is that we may come back to you or I may come back to you and say, no, we weren't able to get Elm Street this year. Or we didn't do Pleasant Street this year because of the fact that they did all the, they're gonna pave it this year. The whole thing's gonna get paved. There's not a lot of desirable planning locations there, so on and so forth. So I think that as, as a group, I think we have to keep the 250 goal. If we lose the 250 goal, then we're going to go backwards. So we're going to get the 250 goal by doing what the commission recommended to me that they would like to see done. We're going to try to get those done to the best of our ability, including the neighborhood fall planting, plus planting in the wards, and plus trying to catch setback plantings, just like we did before. So, uh, so going hold, back on, to hold on a second. Let me, yeah. let me see. So, so what I hear you saying is, okay, let's do due diligence to fulfill this scheme yes. that we all voted on. Yes. If we are like we we got these projects stacked up that we can't logistically get to, either because the trees are going to be in the fall, or we can't get the DPW. You know, I mean it's you have other things, things going on, you know? Yes. So what, let's say we realistically can only do, whatever, this section in the spring. So theoretically you have X number of trees left over that we need to get <coughs> in the ground. Like what's the process then that we, like how does that happen that we go in the neighborhoods and identify more sites to plant, right? Because so, yes. so, that's a solution, so, we need to, so we need to get the trees So for example, if you took, if you took 10, so we increase the trees to 10 trees a ward, just for an example. That's 70 trees planted. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do more, it'd be 100 trees. We would move into a neighborhood somewhere or locations, not in a particular neighborhood, but locations where we've taken trees down. 
Okay. I mean, there's a gazillion places off the top of my head. I can just go back in my office and look at the stump list that we've done this year of trees we've cut down. I know that's not really the type of, you know, plant a tree here and let's move on three miles from here. That's not really what we want. But if if we can't get to all these locations effectively because of the various things mm -hmm. that Jen and I mm -hmm. just said and Rob have said, then we need to find a way to get the rest of the trees in the ground so we stay at the 250 mark. So here's a very practical level. Florence, Florence, Florence Harris. Florence Harris, Florence Harris, whatever it is. Florence. Heights. Florence Heights. Heights. It's like, I know in this commission we spoke about wanting to plant there. And so I immediately go and say, look, I can't plant on Pleasant, but I can plant there. So right away, you know. And it's that is, and, and if you consulted with the subcommittee that worked on the planting plan, you'd see that that is a priority area. So, capiche, we're all fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I want there to be some coordination back with, with the larger plan. Um, my concern is, uh, and I like, I like Rich's suggestion also of, okay, so we expand it to 10 trees award or something like that. But it, it's imperative to me that there be both a reality and a perception of fairness in how we plant trees and it cannot be word of mouth my friends in the neighborhood I've you know I've got my neighborhood covered I'm gonna plant trees you know in my it, we planted a lot of trees in Ward 2 last year and and that's great but we need to consider the whole city and there, there, um, there's a reason for why Ward 2 getting a lot of trees that they got all the tree belts <laughs> I, I appreciate that but there were some streets that were already incredibly green and got yeah. you know a dozen more trees and it's not strategic it's not a, it's not the most fair use of our city dollars and that's what i'm concerned about i'm mm -hmm. concerned that we have um this both perception and reality of fairness mm -hmm. where there is a distribution of um of the tree plantings around the city i think south street probably got the most trees of anybody and so it's your neighborhood that really got it right well, but south street was a priority well, gateway okay and i and i think that's and it's a good example ward six how many trees you plant in ward six right so here's the thing about ward six so ward, so ward six would be between oh. basically my house. Where, where, <laughs> where Jay lives, that whole, that whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all those homes that are between Ryan Road and Burt's Bear Road, mm -hmm. the, 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 the most of the roadway widths from the houses that were built in the 50s are 60 feet wide. Wow. You drive in there, there is no trees. Yeah. There's nothing. Huh. And so I gave Rob a plan and I said, hey, take a ride up there, go look around, and you can see the stone boundaries. And you're talking about tree belts that are 10 feet wide. Yeah. Wow. And on, you know, there's utilities, obviously, overhead utilities, but again, it's just the location of where, you know, we have planted a lot of trees in the wards that are closer to downtown, mm -hmm. yeah. but we also have to think about the wards mm -hmm. that are outside of here. You, you know, you think of Ward 7 and Ward 6 as being in the woods, mm -hmm. basically, which in reality, those cluster developments between them, they're mm -hmm. not in the woods, so yeah. it's a really good place right. to plant. Right. So again, another place that we can look at, but I think, the message is, we, I don't think we, I don't want to get this too convoluted because I feel like we're kind oh, of so going down this on. path, but yeah. I think we really just need to try to continue with the plan that's been laid out by the commission to the best of our ability, try to get the trees planted that we have presently in, this, in the yard and get the trees that we have that are coming set to these different locations. And if we can't get these priority streets, then we will have to increase the neighborhood plantings, which will require mm -hmm. us to go hunt around and you know, use Tree Keeper to find these locations where we can maybe do block plantings in, in, a, in a neighborhood, Ward 6. Right, well, I mean, another thing we consider is doing several neighborhood plantings the way that we've laid them out per year instead of, instead of just one. So um, We could, but I think it's gonna be, I, this is just gonna be a fluid thing because every year it's gonna change a little bit because we're not absolutely. gonna have the right stock available yeah. for every location that the commission recommends the plant. It's yep. just not gonna happen that way. So we have to change things. So if you if we plant X amount, if we plant 10 trees in Ward 6 and seven trees in Ward 7, then so be it. Yeah, you know, I feel like next year we might plant 20 trees in six because there's particular trees that I know are gonna be coming down the pike that belong right. so in Ward so, 6. So, so, that, so that would be actually something that well, we would bring. Well, that would bring, make up for previous years. Right, so and then we would bring, you would bring that to the commission and say, look, here's a, here's a potential planting project. What do you think? We have this tree species available in this neighborhood and there's nothing, you know? So I okay. think it's just a matter of. I'm gonna move us along because yes. we're five minutes um, past <coughs> our, um, our time schedule. And I feel like 
I think we've exhausted this for now. Anyway, we can circle back to it. We understand that there needs to be some flexibility in this because of the nature of <laughs> the complexity <laughs> of stock, yeah. supplies, resources, volunteers. Um, but I, but I, 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 I'm glad to hear that we, in, um, in concept, still support the idea of having a plan. Well, I, I don't think I don't think I don't think we can relieve the city without a plan. I just don't see it. I mean, you, well, I, I, okay, I did this for you. before do. Rob. Before Rob, you were here. I planted trees by myself with a couple of guys, and we just planted them nilly willy everywhere because oh, a tree was cut down here. We, you know, the concept to me of actually figuring out making a plan and actually having the backing to get the tree stock to plant the whole street was. Was, wasn't even up there. So I think the plan is good. I think it's just going to require a lot of tweaking, that's all. I just wanted to say that having a plan is good as long as it can be very general. So I think not planting tree in, in the tree in the, um, the arteries, the main arteries, was fine with me. Planting them in them is fine. But then when it gets more detailed, then all of a sudden you stop and Volunteers. So that's so that's right. where that's where we just have to work I and it. just so it has to be really yeah. general. I also am fine with you know in a, a year we come back and we revisit this plan and say is this the plan we want to do our next mm -hmm. two years? Mm -hmm. with? Mm -hmm. would, it be, so. would it be helpful if the subcommittee meets and just sort of drafts maybe some kind of more detailed prioritized list or way of? Um, I think I'm hearing the opposite. <laughs> I think I'm here as a way to help make decisions. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, let me think about that. But I, I do want to move us forward because okay. I don't want to get it. I don't want us to feel stuck. All right. Um, we, well, like one other question: yes. Are you going to go over the neighborhood planting? Uh, neighborhood planting. Well, that had that had been my hope for the time that we just okay. spent right. on this sorry. discussion. Just, That's sorry. okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I. Okay, so uh, of the planting plan, we didn't get any farther than the priority streets, but now we don't have much time to talk about the other things. So I'm just going to mention that la at last meeting, um, we finalized the registration form for the neighborhood planting plan, and it was our um, uh, uh, it was our desire to have this be the pilot year where we actually require, even though we've got a, a pre-approved neighborhood, to um, to target that we'd still like them to go through the motions of um, feeding through the registration form and um, demonstrating that they have the capacity to, to have a, a project like this brought to their neighborhood. And that um, even though it's onerous, we felt like it would allow us to iron out the kinks and, and see if we need to tweak any aspect of it. So. Um, I wanted to check in with you guys about, well, first of all, the, this this planting, it's, it's pretty much impossible it happened in May. It, Which planting? The neighborhood, the Orchard Street neighborhood. No, I, I, th I think we I need to, we to I think yes. we need to. There was some confusion. Yeah, we need to, this one we're going to do, we're going to have to do it in do the in fall. Do in the fall, okay. But Is that, because you had mentioned May, and I didn't know if, if we're all talking the same. We, want, I we have trees. We do, we do have trees, but I'm not sure that we can, I'm not sure that we can, if we're going to follow it through the, through the neighborhood, are we going to have the ability to do it before June, middle of June, end of June? I, I don't know that, I don't know the answer to that question. What's the capacity in the neighborhood? Do you have a sense that they have, like, a, 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 a coordinator who's in charge, they have volunteers all lined up that they can demonstrate? That's or what we haven't had, is my understanding, in Orchard Street? Uh, what would happen in Orchard Street? Um, I, I, I don't think Orchard Street necessarily. I mean, Orchard Street's not that, not that easy, but there are people in that neighborhood. Other streets. Who I mean, would we like have people on, yeah. who other streets who have received a lot of trees. Like Lincoln didn't have any trees, and there's a lot of trees in Lincoln. We we're thinking we could motivate the people on Lincoln to come over and help their neighbors. Tree. Um, might not be organic from the street of Orchard. We haven't had that much response. Yeah, unless you have people I, who are yeah. raring to do it, but the people in Lincoln have this great fire. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be our strategy for Orchard Street. Yeah, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that would be excellent, but the other thing might be is that if we were to roll this out 
So in conjunction with the actual rollout of the actual applications, which would yeah. be this fall, we could also include in the press release that this is happening, but please join us on Orchard Street for our pilot program mm -hmm. that is being run through the Tree Warden Public Safety Commission and the residents of the Orchard Street neighborhood to see how this program works. So it'd be like a demo. Like a demo. Mm -hmm. So people could actually come, if, they were, if they're really interested in this, they could say, okay, I'm gonna take a ride to Orchard Street today, or maybe I'll volunteer at Orchard Street to see exactly what it's all about mm -hmm. and see if my neighborhood would be interested. So, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like a, mm -hmm. a demonstration. Like instead a of demonstration. Fire. So that would give oh, that's neat. the commission a little time to finish. We could have a flyer. Like oh, I think I, we could do we something. could do some media push. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but so Still then, for the do you have the vision of doing it in June then? Since they have since no, have I think if we we're going to do this project, that it would. I think if we we're going to do this project and try to attract folks that want to plant in their neighborhood, so we can get some applications for 2019 that we would want to have the actual planting on Orchard Street kind of going on at the same time as the application is rolled out so mm -hmm. people can actually tie the two together so it's fresh in their mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, it's just a thought. It's just a All right, well, that's kind of great so, so, so I don't think that we have to call this Orchard Street because that feels like it makes it narrows it. What we could do it is call it something like the Bridge Street Cemetery neighborhood or whatever. I, I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of how they perceive themselves. That way, folks from Lincoln Avenue can feel more like they're, it's all part of the neighborhood project. And I would, I, what, I, what I would like, though, and it's, a, it's, it's uncomfortable to have to force us to do this, but to identify someone who's in that neighborhood, in that broader neighborhood, who's willing to take the lead, who's willing to, to navigate to our site, fill out this form. It's not a terribly onerous form. Um, especially if it has someone lo f like you or you holding their hand a little bit about the various sites. Like you can even pre-feed them. These will be the sites that we've determined are. But, but for them to work on galvanizing their neighbors a little bit. Um, uh, otherwise we're going into a, the real thing with, that, with it being untested. It's true. Uh, I think it, I, think it I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anyone well, I do because I used to live over there, so, but I, I haven't I haven't done it yet because Rob, you said that you had a relation. You were speaking with Shoshana. She didn't uh, answer, so I think you should you know see what you can. Okay, yeah, Go ahead. definitely. Take that. I'm suggesting yeah to reach uh -huh. the Shoshana. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's the best yeah, bet. You, you probably know her. So this and, and I think I, I started drafting something, but held it off because I heard you say that you were planting in May. So affirmative. I, I, to be honest with you, I think we should do this in the fall. Yeah, we yeah. Don't I think we pull I really off. think we, yes, we, we have yeah, bit yeah, off a lot. Now. So when we say fall, like October, is that likely when it would be? I would say uh, October, yeah. November. No, I, September, October. Yeah. Yeah. Probably September. late September, September, early October. September, October. All, all weather dependent. Okay. Yeah, right. people in November can be feeling They don't like it. Okay. Okay. And then that would also work with the rollout of the you know, roll out of the actual program. All right. Yeah. And then so I somehow we could tie it to September the September maybe. Okay. Good right. shot because it's warmer. Okay, yeah. I will I will make an effort to do that. Yeah, I mean if it's not gonna be told you could post the application on the website, maybe someone else will come over to that. Possibly. Um then I've got to work with Karen to get that yep. form on the website. Karen's been okay. She's more than willing to help out. All right. Um I think I'm finally ready to move from this gym to talk. <laughs> <laughs> And Todd is not here to give an ordinance uh, or a planning update. Um, he did say that um, he has a meeting this Friday with Jim Nash, who is, I think, taken over as chair of the um, Transportation and Parking Commission yep. yeah. about um, traffic calming manual. So we're going to buzz past that agenda item. And we're on to the Okay, we're chomping at the bit. We want to get out there and plant some trees. Hmm. and plant as many as we can and I'm um, looking forward to Arbor Day that's um, all really I mean Arbor Day is the next big thing so it's going to be our great that's about all um, Rob unless you have anything else in specific I know you and Alicia have been working hard anything else for Tree Northampton no okay, okay. nothing um, can I uh, volunteer myself and just throw out a concept that if you're looking for people who are not 
uh, who are willing to uh, plant trees in busier on busier streets and uh, and assume will assume, assume the personal risk of not stepping into the street and seeing things like that I'm happy to throw myself on that list thank you okay Marilyn, I don't know if you noticed, but I put a legacy tree planting program on the agenda. Yes, and um, instead of reporting out on it, I hoped perhaps uh, we could take the five minutes. Uh, I was just looking at my previous notes. Um, I had done some investigation on this back in 2017, I believe it was. And um, I'm happy to dive into this, but I just thought perhaps Lily and anybody else in the group could just um, help me clarify what we're looking for. Um, what I had done before, I had called it a memorial commemorative tree program. I looked at some examples, for instance, from uh, a couple places in Connecticut, uh, Belmont, Mass, Cambridge, Mass, Lexington, Mass. Um, so we have some examples that we could mimic or to take the best of their successes and apply it to our own. So what what are we envisioning? Rich, do does the city have a way of accepting donations from people who want to donate toward tree planting in honor of someone living dead or as a carbon off offset? Does, is that our structure already in place? That's yeah, the that, that, that has that uh, city council has to be accepted gifts and voted on by the city council. Is there any way to? The only way to circumvent that would be to have that individual actually purchase a tree from a nursery and have the tree donated. I can take that donation. Hmm. So. Okay, there's. I remember that this sort of came up with. Um, um, Northampton Rail Trail, and so what happened is there was just an arm created, friends, yeah, uh, and they're the ones that accepted the money. Friends of Northampton Trails and Greenways, I think it's. Well, I mean, in essence. That's what Tree Northampton. In North essence, Tree Northampton. The friends group yeah. to a municipal a body. Yeah. yeah. So basically, Tree Northampton would accept the money, and then they would actually arrange to have the tree delivered in stock with the rest of the trees that are delivered, or. Would, they would say, go pick it up at the nursery, the tree's ready. Are you leaving room? Yeah, I gotta go. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we'll I have a question. Bye. Okay. I'll talk to you next month. So that is one way of doing it. If we, the city takes, you know, if, if the money is given to the city, it has to be accepted by city council as a gift, and then put in a gift fund, gift account, special gift account. For that and card. it has to be accepted one by one, gift by gift, by city council? Yeah. At their At the city meeting. council meeting, yep. yeah, upon recommendation of the mayor. It's, it's really an archaic way of doing things, mm -hmm. but it's basically... I feel like when Wayne, over the years, has fundraised for... Oh, I know what he's done. When he's fundraised for land acquisition, it's I think... It's through the Broadway Coalition. Broadway Coalition, um, or through a Western Mass dedicated fund. Okay. So Tree Northampton could be. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Thing. I don't know. Does Tree Northampton spend its money exclusively on? Like, how can we be guaranteed that that money would be used exclusively for the purchase yeah. of trees? I mean, I'd have to ask legal counsel, but I would assume, from my experience in um, nonprofit, it'd be restricted fund. You guys would be willing. To I, I can't to speak to that because yeah. I don't. I want to mm -hmm. ask somebody who really yeah. knows, but. Right. In my experience, if there's money that comes in for a particular project, it's a restricted Okay, do you want to look into that? Fund. Because that would be the workaround. Okay. How about in the summertime when we're, when we're less busy we're less to crazy. look into that? Uh -huh. um, so, so then, so the mechanism of how donations we made, that, that's a key one. And then um, in terms of what people could select and the timing, are, are you envisioning that we would have some particular types of trees that people could choose from? Or would it be more general, we'll take it year by year and see what's available? Oh, I wouldn't want people to weigh into so much detail. That could get become a nightmare and not worth our time at all. I, think, I, think I would say a donation of X 
get to why, and then you know, and then eventually, if we, you know, so we're offering an A particular type of tree. I based on no, that. No, no, I think we have to do it the other way. I think we have to take the, the donation would be taken, and then we have to decide. We would decide. What we would decide yeah. what tree based upon the location of the planting, unless the individual had a specific place. You know, my my parents used to live over on off of South Street. Yeah. Is there any way we can plant a tree yeah. somewhere off of mm -hmm. South Street? And then and even there, it could get really, really. You're. Pain. Um, so, Marilyn, these yeah. are things that you really should find out what other how other tree programs okay. do. Um, but but my thought was more that that you know. A, a minimum amount would get you, you know, would would either get a letter of thanks back to us and a letter sent to the person who was being honored, or would get uh, another level would get them mentioned in a tree speak mm -hmm. on whatever tree we end up planting. No, no promises of location or type of tree, you know, like that sort of thing. The, it's great to see the documents from another. I know yeah. UMass has one. We look Park. Has one a program? With park Yes. For trees? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they tag them? I don't know. I just okay. know that yeah, they so have a program for that. I know UMass has a program for that. And just look at their materials and how they structure it and how they, um, okay. what their levels are. And, and would we want some of our acknowledgement to, to um, link into them? Yeah. Into them. And this is all the, the memorial trees. Oh, and then you need to host, you need to think of it in the long term. If you were going to promise them um, as acknowledgement that it would be hosted on a website, that would be something you'd be you know, locked into. So I don't know what they, I have no idea. I'd like to see, do they put a little plaque made of something very indestructible? All right. Or uh, something that you can feel confident that is that will have longevity in terms of acknowledgement yeah or yeah. nothing at all remember that is an option too mm -hmm. um with grow food we had a lot of you know those seed founders a lot of people asked me can i be commemorated on a rock or can i do? and we just said no mm -hmm. and i'm so grateful it, it does get to be cumbersome because yeah. you're basically making you have to build a database to keep track of everything oh yeah in and a yeah. sense when you, you are just actually planting a tree that's dedicated, you know, here's the X, Y, and Z coordinates, and then yeah. the easiest way to do it would be actually to put it in, in mm -hmm. Tree Keeper, mm -hmm. and then you, you could just have a little link, um, mm -hmm. uh, a quick link that would say oh. Memorial Trees. Okay. And you could yeah. just look at the coordinates. And just give them the geo coordinates. And then yep. hover over it. Yeah. Hover over it, look at it, and then you'd have a street view of yeah. it eventually. And then, that's yeah. your permanent, you're going to always have yeah. that tree it's keeper thing anyway. Yeah. It's not a new yeah. layer that that's you have to build. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. hacking notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> they don't seem to be interested. Yeah. Yeah. Really they don't care about trees. Municipal yeah. right. so, DPWs? I don't know. I don't know. All right. So that sounds... All right. Yeah. Let's And and if, you know, when when it becomes... um when you guys have the capacity to look into it on your end. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. I, I would feel most comfortable if it were, an, if it were a s restricted fund. Like there was no chance it could be used for anything else but for the purpose of pulling That's my familiarity stuff. with something like yeah. that is it's restricted. And with this, I mean, we definitely would have to have, it, you know, think about the commitment of it because if people are trusting that this tree you know, is the commemoration, right. you know, how is that tree going to be cared for and what happens, you know, what are the contingencies yeah. and yeah. it need would need a fairly long term plan depending on what you promise the people. Well, they'd have to pay a lot for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I think you know, I think that we don't just we, don't, we don't have to promise, you know, anything beyond planting a tree. And then mm -hmm. and then uh, because trees are, you know, Fickle. Their trees can die, and I, you know, the idea of like guaranteeing that it be replaced—that's just opening up a whole other. Okay, Ooh, something's happening. Okay. Um, so yeah. All right. Like, you any other business not anticipated by moi? I do. <laughs> Actually, I just want to say one thing. So I went to. I told you I went to. I went to Hartford last two. A week and a half ago, to actually went to Bushnell Park and actually went to the, the uh, their uh, state DEP office, and there was a half day conference on uh, preservation of mature trees. And they, we've got a little tour of Bushnell Park, and turns out that Hartford has a, Hartford's about 128,000 people, 
they have a city arborist, and that is it. There is no tree crew. Wow. There is nothing. Wow. They have no funds. Wow. The only funds they have is for emergency work, and they hire a contractor. It's Save a Tree is uh, one of the contractors, and I don't know if it's Asplen Hill and does emergency work. Wow. So it really, again, another place like I went to Fall River, as I go out farther away, I, I just puts things in perspective, mm -hmm. which I think ties directly to Lily's comments earlier yeah. in the meeting about how we use are, it while we can use it while we have it, yeah. and you know, and make uh, and make the best of it because it can be gone very quickly. They just laid off the last two workers last fall. They had two workers that worked in the parks wow. and cemetery division. The city has a tree truck; it has all the equipment, but it's just wow. in a garage. Jeez. And I don't even know if they plant trees. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that far with that. I didn't have a chance to really talk to the city arborist, but, mm -hmm. but it's just okay. it's just food for thought. Mm -hmm. we, we spend more, we spend more. Then yeah, we spend more per capita here than 128,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 100,000 more people than our city, basically. Yes, and they have, you can call the DPW all day long. And there's, Matter of fact, the uh, West Hartford DPW guy was there with his tree foreman, and they said they actually drive to Hartford under the radar when his boss is not around, and they do tree work for the CR for when they get trouble. Oh. Well. Hmm. I mean, that's great community sharing resources, yeah. but it's just that's well. sad. That's sad. And then, um, I have a question. Yes. The Emerald Ash Borer Workshop on Tuesday. The twenty fourth. Yeah, this yes. coming Tuesday. In Pittsfield, yes. Right. Um, do I need to do anything? About going to that, I want to go to it. You had to be pre-registered. You had to be pre-registered. You have to be invited, I think. Oh, right? shoot. It was invitation only. Oh, darn. Oh, I, can, well. I can send the email out to see if they have any extra spaces. Yeah. I can, I can I'd can. i like to go to it if I can. Okay. Otherwise, oh, well. Lily, well, we I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, in a previous email, I don't know if it was from you or maybe something that somebody forwarded um, was is it Henry Lappin no. had suggested that maybe we have a, a meeting of oh, yeah. tree commissions or committees right, and right. I would be happy to help organize that great great uh, but is that something that we want to I think it's get, always good get going on now uh, do well, you I have think, any objections? no I, I think actually it would be great because I think it's uh, you know, part of the reason that we're here in this room is because of what yeah. we learned from Amherst yeah. and their model, and yeah. I think it's been something that we have accelerated on our, in our own way. Yeah, and frankly, I think that it, it might be a little bit of a, a boost for them because I think that in the last few years they've been waning. They've been struggling mm -hmm. to find new people to, to join the commission, mm -hmm. and there, there's just been a little bit of flagging in their enthusiasm, so it might give them a little lift, which yeah. would be such a shift because I when I just think four years ago how mm -hmm. it was so full of envy of what they had. Well, I know you and I went to them that one meeting yeah. that they had over there and I was like I just heard it was unbelievable. Yeah. And here we are, it's you know, <laughs> it migrated over the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so it. well things go in ebbs and flows, so mm -hmm. would you imagine that, that would that would be like I don't know. would it just be our two groups or others? I, I don't know if there are other tree commissions right around us. East Hampton doesn't have no, one. I don't. Holyoke, I am not aware. I mean Hadley. That's Greenfield. Hadley, 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 Hadley does Hadley I mean how's that going, Terry? Five minutes on Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> shucks. All right. So Springfield has so, well Springfield has a program. Organization. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really no, somebody in West Springfield is involved in the yeah. yeah, we did, we have to post like a regular meeting mm -hmm. because we have a quorum on the uh, state. Yeah, so, yeah. Sure. But I mean, it would be they would probably have to do the same if they had a quorum. Right. Yeah. Would it be in sure. lieu of a regular meeting? No, I don't no, think so. No, something special. Yeah. Maybe on a different Wednesday. Well, we have to see what they can do. Yeah. Sure. Let's explore. All right. You can throw me in the loop if you want. Okay. Okay, if there's no um, other yeah, other business, um, I know you have to go to do, which is people <coughs> around your to do's. You've joined a subcommittee. I have. <laughs> yeah. Jay? What's that? You've been quiet over that corner. This is your, this is your chance. You seem to have missed a lot. I'm trying <laughs> to catch up on what's going on. <laughs> well, actually, you, you haven't missed that much. This was just a little bit of a curveball today. Just a little. little off but um you yeah you missed what last meeting 
Uh, last couple of meetings. Can we get him the um, minutes from? Have you, have you, maybe when someone's absent, you can email them the minutes. Just, yeah, that'd be helpful. We just talked about it. He doesn't look at his email. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not consistent. Okay. All right. I am going to get a computer. Okay. We were thinking maybe you should get a Chromebook. It's cheaper. Oh, yeah? Yeah, way cheaper. Can you store everything in the cloud? Yeah. All right. Ma, um, I don't have any tax except coming to Arbor Day and helping out planting. Oh, okay. Right. right. That's right. Good. Okay. Rich. A million <laughs> the usual. Con, con Street, uh, tree delivery tomorrow. Uh, working with Rob to identify plantings on the priority streets. Uh, putting together everything for the Arbor Day table. Working on maybe getting a tent. Um, Okay. I've got yeah, so many yeah, yeah. things to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. I have... Um, oh, you know, uh, Mike Griffin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call the landscaping companies that are on the spreadsheet, and I'm going to post the landscaping company spreadsheet on the slide. Uh, I'll just take a look at it. I'm going to work on the latest of the Janice slipping out because she has a commitment. Okay, yeah. we still have a form, so we're still actually, we haven't quite yet closed the meeting. Um, and so I'll include your input and those I can come back to Thanks. Yeah, I don't know as I have access to that drive. Maybe you could, could you invite me? Yep. Because I don't know where that drive is. Bye. Bye, Bye Jen. Thanks, Marilyn. Really yep. yep. Please get in touch, Marilyn, and we'll yep. work on it. Okay. And then I'm going to contact Henry uh, regarding a shared meeting with the Ann Personal Hampton. Sorry, did you already say this? You're going to call the landscapers? Yep. Okay, yep. Awesome. I am going to make a sheriff badge for Rich. <laughs> I'm going to write a press release. Uh, I'm going to confirm that the mayor is going to read the pre proclamation. I am going to try to reach out to the larger um, Wood Street Cemetery neighborhood about the planting in the fall. Uh, that's it. And work with Karen to get that formula that's set eventually. Oh, yeah. Karen was a little backed up right now. What's the last name? Karen Nelson. Nelson. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Aye. Move. Okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye.